Okay, IED, we're going to be doing activity 2.1.1, Tolerate This Part 3 uh, for my class. I know there's a lot of different videos on this, but this is what we specifically did in class. I made a spreadsheet, and it is in the modules, and it says it's under Lesson 2.1, right whenever you look into it, and it says Link to Normalization Data, Tolerate This Part 3. Click on that link, and it should load up a Google Sheet. The first thing I need for you to do is to take that Google Sheet and I need you to uh, hit File and I need you to hit Make a Copy. So we're gonna go like this. You're gonna so go File and then you're gonna go down to Make a Copy and that's gonna make a copy of the spreadsheet so that you can actually work Here's with it. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go over into um, that spreadsheet so whenever you make a copy you should be able to go into it and it has a lot of different pin lengths inside of it so it says pin length and these pin lengths are in, in inches what i did was i took little dowel pins and i measured the length of all of them to the nearest one hundredth of an inch or i stole it off of the internet either way there's about 500 individual data points that are right here and i'm going to teach you guys how to do a little bit of the statistics with it and how that works with tolerances as well. Because whenever we were doing with tolerances, tolerances was a, uh, you know, you could use a bilateral tolerance with a positive or a negative, or a unilateral tolerance with just the positive direction. Um, there's a lot of different routes that we could go with that. So I'm gonna show you how this actually applies in statistics. Uh, first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna try to find the average of this. So I'm gonna just type the words average up here, and then I'm gonna hit equal in the next cell. I'm gonna go to equal and I'm going to start typing in average and whenever I start typing it in you're going to start seeing this um, letters that are kind of like all capitals like it's screaming at you click on that and it'll type out average with the parentheses and then don't actually like hit enter or anything you want to go over here and you want to click on the column that says a and it will highlight everything and you'll see how it says average a colon a go ahead and hit shift zero and close the parentheses and then hit enter when you hit enter, you should get an average of about mm, 2.15. If you get a different number, you might not have done it correctly. And that's one of the pieces of information that we need. Another piece is one that we had talked about before, and that's going to be the standard deviation. So I'm going to go ahead and write down standard deviation, if I can spell it right. There we go. And I'm going to input the number uh, as equal S-T-D-E-V open parentheses okay and then click on the column a and then close the parentheses hit enter and you'll get a number the standard deviation looks like it's 0 0.05 and then extra you don't really need all those decimals so we can just hit this uh decrease decimal places number and let's go ahead and just get this down to uh how about three decimal places because I mean all of our instrument measurements are in two decimal places so if we add just one more that should pretty much give us all of the precision that we need for this standard deviation and the average in the standard deviation actually tells you a little bit about what this object or what these series of objects that are being manufactured are doing so uh, another way to look at it is to look at it visually because you know nothing is perfect so if I look at all of these individual numbers all of these individual numbers are very uh, they're going to be some variation between them. So to visually represent that, we're going to click on the column A, then I'm going to go to Insert, and I'm going to go to uh, Chart. So whenever I click on Chart, it's going to give you a piece of crap. So whenever you look at this, it does not look like anything that can be used by a human being because that is not a good way to represent the data. Pin length is on the y-axis, and that's just kind of weird. We're going to go over to the right side, and we're going to change the chart type to a histogram. So we're going to switch this over to histogram. And what you're going to see is you're going to see this bar, this uh, kind of bar chart come up. It's, it's a histogram. Um, but you're going to see a distribution of all of the different size lengths. And these bars are in what we call bins. And they're going to represent a range of data. So everything in this bar is going to be from the numbers 2.23 to 2.27. Everything in this bar, which has the most stuff in it, is going to be going from 2.14 to 2.18. Okay, and what this does is this represents the actual entirety of the data. And um, there's probably a couple of things I need to talk about now. And uh, that is, you can list, uh, you can write out standard deviation. And standard deviation has a, a, a symbol that goes along with it too. 
So I'm going to try, see if I can take a picture of this and write all over it. So I'm going to just kind of take a snapshot and let's go over and we can just kind of throw some stuff in the physics notebook. They won't mind too much. Let's see what we got here. Uh, ignore that physics for a moment. All right, let's see here. We want to write this out. So I'm going to paste this picture in so that we can see. And there we go. All right. The way that you would actually write out the standard deviation of an object is you would write it as the Greek letter sigma. So mathematicians or statisticians are also lazy too. So if you see something that says like sigma equals 0 0.0513, that is the same thing as saying standard deviation. And this is the Greek lower letter sigma. So that's a Greek letter. Uh, some of y'all might not have actually seen it before. It looks like the number nine that got kicked over to its side. And that is a symbol for standard deviation. And here's why we actually use that sig uh, why we use that symbol. I almost called it a signal, but it's not a signal. Let's represent the mean as this line right here. And there's numbers to the right, and there's numbers to the left. So most of the data that we have here, over 60% of the data, is going to fall within one standard deviation of the data itself. So if we go to the right of the mean, that's going to be plus one sigma. And if we go to the left of the mean, that's going to be minus one sigma. And this is going to be about 60% of the data, a little bit over. Okay, if you go out to the next standard deviation, then the next standard deviation is going to be plus or minus two standard deviations. So instead of saying plus one sigma, we're just going to write plus or minus two sigma. Okay, so this plus or minus um, is going to indicate how far we are away from the average. So if the average is 0.12 or 2.15, then the standard deviation is going to tell me that if you're going to go plus or minus from the mean, about a little over 60% of your data is going to be plus or minus 0 0.0513. Okay, and this would be approximately about 60% of all of your pins. If you keep going out and you go two standard deviations, that's going to be 95% of your data. So 95% of your pins are going to be plus or minus whatever two times 0 0.0513 is. It's going to be a little bit over one hundredth of an inch. And this is going to represent 95% of your data. And from a manufacturing standpoint, this is normally how we consider uh, whether or not we need to take things and throw them out or not. So. This type of distribution is called a normal distribution or a bell curve. And this happens whenever you're in manufacturing processes. Um, the bell curve happens all the time whenever you're running things through a machine. Sometimes your machine does things that you don't entirely want it to do. Sometimes it's going to have some deviation that's associated to it. Nothing is perfect, and all of them are going to be a little bit different from each other. Okay? So this is a general idea of how we use these statistics. Anything... Uh, as a general rule, anything outside of two standard deviations is usually like discarded and thrown away. Although there are different companies and there are different uh, procedures that require more stringent amounts of data. So instead of using plus two standard deviations, you may have to use three or four or five standard deviations in order to make it... Um, in order for the data to make the cut or in order for the parts to make the cut. So depending on what you're doing will depend on your criteria and using the standard deviation is one way to use this criteria. So what I'm going to need from you guys is make sure that you turn in, you're going to turn in uh, your sheet with this data table and the chart, the standard deviation and the average written up here like this. Okay. Uh, that's what I'm going to need from you guys, and also I want you to put in, uh, over to the side, I want you to put your initials. So for right here, my initials are HB, so I'm going to put my initials right there, uh, just to make sure that nobody's doing a whole lot of copying and pasting. It's not that hard to do, so just um, go ahead and put those initials in, and I think from there, we'll be good to go. Uh, you'll have a great time, enjoy part three, and I'll talk at you guys later.